Hey everyone, so apparently I am live now, my first live demo video, so this ought to be interesting. All right, so I'm just get started here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is making a pair of uh, coveralls or jumpsuit for a figure. Um, I design patterns for my figures sometimes and usually some tweak and adjustments. I'm pretty sure this one's going to work out. It might not, it's, um, but I figured if I'm going to be sewing one anyway, I might as well, you know, um, do a little bit of a, a demo on it. So let's get started with what I'm going to be using today. Uh, first off is my sewing machine, and it's a Brother XL 2600i. Cheap sewing machine, got it on Amazon. It's worked for everything I've done so far, so no problems there. I've got my patterns that I've um, already cut out to save some time. I just print these out on a heavier uh, printer paper after I design them using a vector program like Corel Draw, Illustrator, Flash, um, you know, whatever. Freehand if you're old school. Uh, let's see, fabric. I've got just a cotton yellow orange here. I'll just call it gold. I've got these two fabrics. This is a stretchy ribbed one I'm gonna use for the sleeve cuffs. And this one is a yellow and black stripe I'm gonna use for some additional detail. Both of these were white initially. This was white with black stripes or black with white stripes. And this was white. I dyed them a few days ago to match as close as I can to this. I've got a zipper that has a closed bottom. Uh, cloth only scissors. Because, you know, if you start using these scissors for anything else, it's going to jack them up and they won't cut cloth anymore. Seam ripper, because inevitably I will mess shit up. Stuff up. Uh, this is a rotary cutter. And it's basically a razor blade wheel, like a pizza cutter. Kind of dangerous, to be honest. Um, one little slip of this and you're in a world of hurt. But it does fantastic job of um, making quick work of cutting the fabric. This is just a normal dental pick thing. I use it when I'm um, threading the bobbin. A 3B soft lead pencil. Uh, I've been using this pencil for a long time, obviously. It's a soft lead, so it marks the fabric pretty easily if you're using a light fabric. If you're using a dark fabric, which I'm not today, but if you are, I recommend a white charcoal pencil. They work pretty well. Uh, these are just little thread snips. These work very well for just cutting the thread, removing things. Um, tweezers in case I need them. I don't know if I will or not. And some various clamps. Um, sometimes I make use of these. Sometimes I don't. I'm going to put them out of the way for now. Let's see. This is a Petri dish. Um, neighbor gave me a whole bunch of these left over from something their kid did for science. They're all clean. They were all just unused. Um... But basically, it's plastic, little plastic tray, and it's perfect for holding small parts. What I have in here is a bunch of pins. I've got straight pins. I've got sewing needle. Um, it's just handy to throw them in there than try to keep them back into the tomato over there. Um, I have black thread in the sewing machine now because I'll be using that first, but I've also got matching gold thread to use on the rest of the parts later, so I'll have to swap that out. Uh, okay, scrap paper. I'll show the use for that later. I've got some thicker, what I, I'm going to call them templates. And I use these when I'm ironing to make curves and stuff easier when I have to iron a curve on a sleeve. I've got a flat ironing board over there that I made using a piece of MDF, some um, heat reflective material and some old um, curtain excess because Ikea will not sell short curtains. They only sell curtains that are longer than your house. So I saved the excess material and use it for crap like that. 
And I've got my iron, which not plugged in yet, no need, but I've already got it filled up with water. I've got a cat by the door, which she hears me talking. Everybody needs that. And I think that's all I need. I've got my tea because I am constantly drinking tea. Okay, so that's everything for now. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to move all this crap out of the way that I don't need immediately. And I will get back to it later. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've already pre-cut at an angle, two different angles, this stripe thread because I want it to look like caution stripes. So got to figure out where the center is here on the camera. There we go. Okay. So I've cut them two separate angles from the small scrap that I dyed yes a couple days ago. And it's still going to be on the shoulder of the piece. So what I'm going to do first is a little bit of pre-sewing before I even start marking my pattern. Because I want these just to be on the top portion of the sleeve, uh, not the whole sleeve. That might look a little odd. And put some of this other fabric out of my way. So I'm going to need a piece of um, this yellow plain fabric here. And what I'm going to do is stitch these to the end. I'm going to plug my iron in now and get it heated up and ready to go. So what I need to do is make sure that I'm going to have enough material here to do the whole sleeve. So that's fine. I'm going to grab a ruler. And the rotary cutter, and remove the safety. I don't know if you can see, there's a little safety thing that pops up and down. There's a switch. Always make sure to put the safety on. And I'm just going to cut out enough fabric here for two sleeves and some excess. But make sure you have a little excess when you're sewing. I hate to waste fabric and any kind of material, really, but. With sewing, you kind of can't help it if you want to make sure that it sews well. You end up trimming it off the edge later anyway, so don't worry too much. About a half inch is all you really need. And let's see, I'm done with that for now, so I'll toss it out of my way. I'll cut this in half, one for each sleeve. All right, so two pieces. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to pull over my ironing board. Move my templates out of the way. So what I want is a flat. This is just thick um, paper. It's got like kind of a rib texture. It doesn't matter. Just any thick hard stock will do. And what I want to do here is just so I just want to... um. Put a little crease on the edge here, and you'll see why in a second. I'm using a steam iron on the cotton setting because this is all cotton or cotton blend material. I might turn it down a little bit for later when I use the rib material because that is full cotton, I don't think. All right, so I've sewn the edge here. I mean, it's not sewn. I've ironed the edge here. So now I've got a nice clean lip on the edge. And I'm going to do it with this other piece of fabric. And I'm, I'm putting this back about half inch, three, six, three sixteenths, maybe. A little over a quarter, so it would be three eighths. All right, so this is nice and straight because, you know, templates help. All right, so get the ironing board out of the way. So I've got my two sewn edges here. Now what I'm gonna be doing is since I want the stripe to be on the top of the shoulder and the rest of the sleeve to be yellow, 
I'm going to top stitch this along here with black thread. I'll flip it over, and then I can see the stripe through there a little bit. This yellow material is not exactly um, thick, but it's fine for what I'm doing. And I will line it up along this line here on my pattern. And then I'll draw around the edge, cut away the excess, and then I'll have the sleeve portion. So let's get to some sewing here. Now, top stitching is the part that you guys are usually like, how did you get such fine stitching? And frankly, I don't know. I just kind of do it. So let me get this in a good position here so that you can see everything. All right, so I'm going to line up the fabric along the top. And I'm just going to stitch all the way down along the edge of the fabric, getting it as close to the edge as I can. Probably about a little more than a sixteenth, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, a uh, couple millimeters if you're international. All right, so I've lined it up. Now, you can't probably see it, but there's one little notch in the middle of the presser foot here that shows the center line. There's a little slot there so you can kind of see what you're doing. I kind of use that as my guide. I kind of just kind of keep it in a certain spot. Um, now, the sewing machine works in several ways here. Um, this button here is for reversing, and I'm going to use this to do lock stitching and go back two forward, stitch or two backwards, and then I'll go forward again. That's going to lock the end of both sides of the stitch so it doesn't unravel. Um, there's a wheel on the side here, and the wheel, which I'll do now, turns the needle. And I'm going to go back a couple, and I just did my lock stitch by hand. Um, sometimes you want to hand um, do it slowly, so the wheel comes in handy for that. There's also on the floor below me, which you can't see, a pedal, like kind of like a gas pedal. The more you push down on the pedal, the faster the machine is going to go. So I'm going to just do my edge here. I'm only pressing down on the pedal a little bit keeping it lined up, one hand on each side of the fabric, and just steady and slow. And, um, I mean, it's going to feed, I mean, it's going to keep steady for the most part, but it can shift, especially if, you're, if you have more layers of fabric. So I'm just going to go all the way across this whole yellow piece. Go back a few stitches to lock it, and that's it for the first sleeve piece. Grab my little snippers here, pull the presser foot up, snip the thread. So I've got the first one here, and I don't know if you can see. There you go. So that's sewn right across that edge there. So on the top of the sleeve, it'll be kind of like that. All right, now I'm going to do the other side. Line it up on my fabric here. Slide this in here. I mean, the sewing part's actually not too difficult. People ask me if I hand sew all the time, and I mean, you'll see some little parts here. I will end up hand end up hand sewing, um, just because it's easy, but. For the most part, I'm using the machine. Now, every once in a while, the top thread here, just because of this machine, when I push the foot down, depending on where the whole thing is, it's going to pull the thread back out through the needle. So I might have to rethread the needle if that happens. Um, usually it only happens if I forget to hold the thread down for the first stitch or two. Otherwise, it's fine. Okay, so I just did the locking stitch. Now I'm going to do the same thing, go along the edge slowly. And just keep it, you know, close to the edge. Go slow. No need to rush it. Almost to the edge. And a couple back stitches. All right. So, you notice I'm turning the wheel at the end here. I'm just aligning the needle up back into the proper position out of the fabric. 
and the other side's done. So now I have two sides, and these sides have stripes going in the opposite direction, which will be handy later. All right, turn the machine off, push it out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to... Where is my... Oh, okay, cool. Right in front of me. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to use the stitch line here, as you can see on the other side here, because I used black thread. And I'm going to line it up with the dotted line on my pattern, because that's where I want it to be. And, and I'm just going to take this 3B pencil, 2B, regular number 2 pencil will work too. Um, and I'm just going to lightly go along the edge. Now, the pencil is kind of dull. That's nice, though, for this. It's um, a sharp pencil is going to catch and snag on the fabric and pull the fabric around. Just a nice, soft, dull edge pencil works pretty well. So I went around the fabric. I'm not sure if you can totally see. There you go. And did the outline of the sleeve shape. Ooh, I'm forgetting something. Actually, this is important. Bottom of the sleeve. What I want to add to the bottom of the sleeve is the ribbed material for the cuff. I almost forgot about that. So this is the ribbed material. And let's see if I can get a close-up of that. It's ribbed and it's stretchy. So it's kind of like, you know, a sleeve you'd see on a coat or, you know, a sweater. All right, put my iron back in here. I don't like to leave the iron plugged in constantly because, like I said, I'm a bit frugal, and to me, that is a waste of electricity. All right, so I'm going to cut a strip here. That was stupid of me. I had to guard off. All right. Now, I probably need to change the blade on this. It's... um not cutting all the way through. If it doesn't cut all the way through, just give it a little cut. If you try to go safety back down, if you try to go back and forth, you're going to um, end up, you know, making the edges kind of weird. All right. And I'm going to just cut this in half along one of the lines here. Excellent. And I'm going to grab my ironing board again. And I'm going to iron along the edge. And I'm just going to kind of center this. And again, I could trim away any excess later. I'm going to iron a crease in this anyway. It's just um, it's just easier. Um, definitely want to try to steam iron it. It just holds the, especially if it's a cotton, it'll hold the, the shape better. Um, okay, so this is creased on the edge. It's not going to start flying away from me later, which is why I'm doing it. It'd just be easier to control. Do the other piece, fold it over the template. All right, so I got the two sleeve cuffs. Get those out of the way. Now, let's see. Got to draw the pattern on this side as well. And you'll see why in a sec. Okay, so line that up. Pencil that in. Thicker materials I have occasion with like a rubber backing. I've used a Sharpie before. Um, you kind of watch with a Sharpie. I mean, the Sharpie is really easy to do this with, but it also bleeds through. And if you're not a hundred percent with your stitches, then you end up seeing, you know, a mess. Even with the pencil and this thin material, you want to make sure you're not getting too dark with it. Darken some of this up a little bit just for my own ease. Okay, so on the bottom of the sleeve here, I'm going to trim away a little bit of the excess from the pattern. First, see how slick that is? I love this tool. I'm sure, it works on paper too. I just never, you know, bothered. So, get rid of some of this excess material. And uh, do it, whoops, Let's... 
There we go. Bump the camera. All right. Do it on the other side here. So I guess the camera is not 100% out of my way, but that boom arm is working pretty well. Feels weird to have to just keep talking to myself, but what you got to do, I guess. All right, cut the excess off top of the sleeve here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is kind of reposition this camera again. All right, this is the, the sleeve. This is the bottom of the sleeve. This is the cuff that would be around here. So the sleeve should only go to about here. The cuff would go about that far on the sleeve. So what I need to do is along the bottom of the sleeve line there, I'm going to iron it back so I have the nice clean edge, same clean edge I have along there on the front. And then what I'll end up doing is sewing the cuff fabric to that before I even sew, sew the sleeves together. So cuff, sleeve, top shoulder detail, that's how that'll go. Let me do the ironing on the other sleeve. Messed it up, which I knew I would. All right. Sure it's all flat. Okay, excellent. All the ironing is done for the sleeves. Now I'm going to switch out the thread on the bobbin and the whole machine to the gold thread. So got my spool of thread, got my bobbin. And I'm going to take out the black thread and the black thread bobbin. Um, so sewing machines work with basically two spools. The, the small one down to base on the machine is called a bobbin. And you wind those yourself. Most machines have a winding feature, so you can wind them. I bought a whole bag of spare bobbins so i don't have to worry about re-threading them real cheap okay so make sure you, the, the trick is making sure you put the bobbin in the correct way uh you put it in the wrong way and everything gets all tangled up and doesn't work properly all right so next is threading the machine now the end of this thread is a little frayed i'm just going to give it a quick snip Turn the light on so I could see and thread the needle. Then there's enough times that it usually goes pretty easy. Then you got to turn the dial once and I use the pick to pull the thread through. So now it's all ready to go with a new color. Okay. So I'm going to line this up with about how much end I want here for the cuff, line it up as straight as I can, and let's go to the edge here. You notice I'm not pinning anything yet. I will pin stuff later, but for stuff that's just, you know, preliminary, lined up straight, edging stuff, it's not 100% necessary. Okay, so locking stitch. And then I'm going to go across and top stitch this in slowly, carefully. Now I'm using the yellow thread, which will pretty much disappear. I mean, you'll see the stitch, but it's not like it's going to be a black line. Sometimes I top stitch in a color thread. I want something that looks more like a stripe. But that's not necessarily what I want here. Lock stitch the end. And snip that. Snip the edges of the thread here so they're not hanging around and getting in my way later. 
Okay. And then I'm just going to cut that excess off. So once I do that, I've kind of lost some of the pattern on the back. I'll have to redraw that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the excess fabric from the cuff and the sleeve that I'd ironed over. And I'm going to do this on the back so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm only going to leave about, I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch or so. Get rid of that scrap. And so that's what the inside looks like. And this is the outside. So you have the little cuff here with the stretchy end of the sleeves. And then I'll do the same thing on the other one. Now, always make sure you're using the right side of your fabric, too. Um, this cuff material is actually a little flatter on the back side. So, put this here so I can make sure I'm lining it up the same width as the first one so it matches. Do the same stitch, locking stitch first, and then top stitch along that. Now, if you're just starting to do this, you're going to mess up a lot. So much. I mean, I screw this up all the time. That's why this is a test one. I don't even know if this is actually going to turn out in the end. I am not a professional. I didn't go to school for any of this. I just kind of kind of picked up most of this on my own. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just snipping the excess stuff off of here. Uh, it's kind of funny. I don't actually watch many YouTube videos on how to do stuff, and yet here I am making a YouTube video on how to do stuff. All right, so what I'm gonna do is line my pattern back up over where I'd already lined it. And so now I can see here on the inside of the sleeve, I'm just gonna kinda of continue drawing downward, just put a little light pencil line, that's gonna help later. So now my pattern is continued all the way to the bottom of the sleeve. And do that on the other side. Okay, those are sewn together. Sleeve pieces are done. Now I can cut out the rest of the pattern. So I've got two pieces here. One for the front, one for the back, and they're they're different. Uh, a little more room in the seat and around the neck. Um, I have some markings on this one for the zipper. Now I only go up to the top of the collar, and I just need to figure out how far down I want the zipper to go, which is I've already marked the line, and I've marked the same line. I don't know if you can see, I put the same line on the other side after I cut it out. And you'll see why in a second. I'll move my zipper off the side and grab my yellow fabric again. All right, so... So what you end up doing is... The front two pieces and the back two pieces are each mirrored. So I'll cut one of the front back piece on the front side here after I mark it. Now this cotton fabric here is, you know, pretty nice. It's not a stretchy fabric. Stretchy fabrics are a pain to to mark. 
So you want to pull with the pencil or pen. I've tried some liquid um, white pens before for marking, and I don't know, they just don't seem to work for me. In fact, a lot of the pencils that come with the kits or that are specific for marking, I've not had good luck with them. So, you know, use what works best for you, right? Okay, so this first one's marked. That's it. I'm going to mark the second one, and when I get it close, um, I'm going to have to cut between. I'm also going to have to leave a little bit of space in between all of this. So I flipped over the back side of the pattern. And I'm just going to carefully mark with pencil. All right, so I've got the two sides of the back here, left and right, and I'll just put a little... Actually, I'm not going to because it'll show up. I'll put it on the edge. Put a little B here on each side. That way I know it's the back in case I forget later. Now I'm going to do the front. So I'll do the back side of the front first so that it's close enough to this that I'm not wasting a whole ton of fabric. And just carefully line this with your pencil. Okay, so I have that little line that I showed you that I marked before. I'm just going to extend that out onto the pattern here. And that's going to mark where the zipper ends. So the zipper is going to go down to that line. Now I'm going to flip the pattern over. And draw the front part. And here's the line. So make sure I don't forget to mark that. When I sew the zipper, I'm actually going to have to go um, cut here a little bit, fold that in, so that the zipper has enough space. Otherwise, it'll be, you know, kind of weird and bunchy. So I measure there's a seven millimeter gap for the zipper which means about three and a half millimeters on each side. Well, I'm way off here for some reason. Oh no, the fabric just shifted. Okay. And you're gonna make sure your fabric doesn't shift because then your lines won't line up later. Okay, so front and back, I'll just mark a little F here and here on the outside, and then I know. All right, time to cut these out at the rotary cutter. And I'm just going to zip around the edges here carefully. Trying to cut these out by hand is actually a royal pain in the butt uh, with scissors. Doing it on the desktop like this with this cutter just makes it so much easier. It's like drawing them. When you're holding it with the scissors and trying to cut, the fabric is moving around. It's flopping. You can't see the whole piece. Um, I mean, I've done it enough that it's not too hard, but it's definitely a lot easier. Plus, you know, you end up with the, the jagged edges there. So, you know, using the rotary tool is just quicker, easier, a little more dangerous. I guess that makes it a little more fun. With the potential to you know slice your fingers off and have to go to the emergency room for stitches or just put a little super glue on it all right so if it doesn't cut through a thread just go back over that little spot real quick and 
the edge there. All right, so that's two pieces cut out. And you notice the creases. I'm going to iron all that out before I get started. Now, what I actually, what I usually do, because this is becoming a pain, I have the whole piece of fabric on my lap here, and it keeps wanting to fall on the floor, so it keeps pulling this. I'm just going to sift these out real quick, get rid of the rest of the fabric, toss it on the table behind me, and that'll make my life easier. Now, I'm just trimming away some excess here. I'm not, nothing's perfect. I'm not trying to get a perfect distance or anything. I just need to make sure there's enough excess. Yeah, I love these rotary tools. This makes it so much easier. Okay, that's it. So I've got all the pieces for the front and back marked and cut out. So now I'm going to iron these smooth and then I'll start stitching. Put the iron back in. All right, have some tea. My iron heats up pretty quick, thankfully, so no big deal there. All right. So I try to keep my ironing on the inside of the suit. Um, I've noticed even with the cotton material, sometimes you can get a little melt or shine. So I try to keep that minimized. Wow, this fabric's really kind of thin, isn't it? All right, so what I'll end up doing when I, if I put this on a figure is I'll put a white bodysuit underneath it, which, you know, so you don't see the skin underneath. Although it's probably going to be fine. It probably won't even matter, to be honest. I could double all this up. I could make two layers of everything, but that's a little overkill for this, especially since this is mostly a test. Um, I have some iron-on graphics I already cut out on my Cricut. I'll show you guys later that'll go on this. And it'll um, they actually kind of match the, the shaft and the ramen shop that I did. So this guy could potentially, this could be a costume potentially for, you know, a customer in the ramen shop. I could have a guy sitting on one of the stools eating a bowl of ramen. I'll have to do a demo on that one of these days, making those bowls of ramen. Okay, so now's where it starts to get tricky, where I'm sewing the main parts together. So really, for the bodysuit, it's just five or six overall pieces plus the zipper. The two sleeves, the two halves of the front, the two halves of the back. So I'm going to put the two halves of the front to the side. And first thing I'm going to do is I need to sew the back together. So this will be along the back and then down along the butt crack. So I want to make sure that this all gets lined up. You sew on the outside for this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin right in the corner here on the pattern. And then mirror this so flip it over and now i got to make sure that that pin that same pin comes through the same corner on the opposite side here so that lines up those two corners i keep my pins kind of just straight up and down i end up poking myself a lot but the pin's just going to stay there sticking up throughout this process if i try to do the pin if I try to weave it through, what's going to end up happening is that it's going to shift the fabric, and I don't want that. Uh, when you're working with small stuff like this, you want to be as 
precise as possible. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing down at the crotch point. So having these two pins, and I could see and feel the pins are standing straight up, which is good. That means nothing's pulled off, nothing's shifted. So when I sew along this line here, when I flip it over, the stitch should actually be on the pencil line on the other side. I can give it a little test. Take a pin, I put it down in the middle here, and pull up. And as you can see, the pin came through on the other side, right along the line. So I did that kind of perfectly. Hooray! That doesn't always work. All right, pull my machine back over, turn on the light. And the machine in general, the light comes on when it's on. Make sure I have enough lead thread here. And I'm going to pull this up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the fabric down tight and then slide out this first pin and toss it into the Petri dish. I don't want the pin in my way. Line this up on the corner. And this first, um, first time needle goes in, there, it's like a pin again. So really, it's just like having the pin out for a second or two. Um, I'm going to do a lock stitch here on the top. Now, I try to do multiple back and forth on pressure points, like the ends of things, like the ends of the sleeve, stuff like that. Things that later on when I'm trying to put it on the figure might pull, might pop the stitch, that nothing worse than that. Like when you're, when you think you're done with the project and your stitches break because you know, you've made the outfit too tight. All right. So now I'm just going to sew slowly along that line. Now this line is not straight. So I am softly shifting the fabric over. If I try to shift it too much, though, like I have that curve, this tight curve here at the bottom, if I try to shift the fabric too much, it's going to, you know, unalign it at the bottom. So I'm leaving that needle in still. And what I'm going to do is the needle is down it, through the fabric. I can lift up the presser foot, turn the fabrics a little bit, give it a couple turns. Needle's starting to get in my way now, so I'll, the pin, I'll pull it out. Needle still down, lift up the presser foot, turn it, give it a couple hand turns here. And this is just this is when you end up doing the hand cranking. Um, when you're doing tight little edges like this, you want to make sure that you don't overstitch it. Too many stitches, it's going to want to go in a straight line. Ish. Okay, so now I'm at the end of the crotch, so I can do my lock stitch. And that's done. So let's see how well I did here. Snip that off. So this is the front side and the stitches along the pencil line. The back side, pretty good. Slightly off here, um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you're really close. And this is actually about as good as it gets. I'm trying to get that close so you can see. There we go. So you can see it went through pretty well. All right. Uh, snip off the excess thread here at the top. Already did it at the bottom, underside. Okay. So now back to a little bit of ironing. All right. So I've got this sewn here. When I open it up, that's actually the back, the figure's back here. I've got this excess fabric here. I want to keep that there for now. And what I want to do is I'm going to flip this over and iron it straight. Now, ironing things... What I'm doing here, I don't know how to explain this. I'm cutting little lines into the fabric here, as close to the stitch line as I could possibly get along the curve. If I don't do that, it's going to be the fabric's going to want to bunch up when I open this up, but it all kind of folds together then whenever it turns for the bud. So 
you know, you don't want to look like he's carrying a load. All right. So now I'm going to take this back part here. I'm going to iron along this. And so now I've got a nice flat piece for the back. And I'll do that. I'll at least steam it. Like I can't really get into clothes this, but if I steam it with the iron and quickly pull, kind of get it ready there. There we go. Again, I am not a professional. I'm sure there's easier, better ways of doing this. I just kind of do what I do. All right. So now you can see there's the butt right there. So the way I, the way I iron that curves over like the pattern. So that's the seat of the pants there. All right. So the reason I iron that is I want to put a top stitch on both sides of this. Just um, It just looks nicer. So it's not just that one blank boring seam down the middle. It's going to have a couple little top stitches down the side. Um, this look a little nice. This look a little nicer. And again, this is all just you know, like how do you do fine stitching? You do it slowly and with experience, I guess. Take your time, figure it out, mess up a lot. Learn from your mistakes. I mess up so much stuff all the time. And it can get frustrating, but, you know, it's not worth crying about. You just figure out what you did wrong. Take that information. And use it to make things better next time. I'm only going to go down so far on this top stitch here. And I'm going to go across the seam a couple stitches. And I'm going to go back the other side. Now I'm using the center seam here that I'd already sewn as a guide to, to line this up. So now I'm going back up the other side. And I'll see if I can zoom in on this in a bit. I'm going past the collar line a little bit on this. It doesn't matter. All right, cut away the excess thread. And let's see if I can zoom in here. So see, that looks nicer than just the plain boring seam. It's a little tricky to get that all the way down into the seat area. So I only did it so far down. It won't matter. It'll look cool. Plus, I'm going to have a nice big graphic on the back, which will be pretty cool. All right. So that's it for the back for now. Um, next up... What should I do? This is tricky because I'm actually kind of thinking of how to do some of this on the fly. Because, um, I haven't done this pattern in a while with the sleeves. I've done sleeveless versions and then coats over top of it. But this is how it ends up going together. So I'm trying to figure out right now if I want to do the zipper next. And so the front together, or if I want to start sewing all of this together, um, you know what? It's going to be easier if I put the zipper on next. I'm going to do that next. Okay, so let's grab the zipper. Workflow is important when you're sewing stuff together. You, if I were to sew, try to sew the sleeves like you know together now. It would be very difficult to sew them on the actual figure later, on the actual rest of the suit. All right, so remember the lines I marked on the front before for the zipper? They match on both sides. And I need to go in an additional three millimeters or so. So I'm going to take this same pattern, and I'm going to move it in a little bit. And I'm going to mark where I need to fold for the zipper edge. 
on both sides. Actually, I'm going to grab one of my alien jumpsuits, which I haven't put on a figure yet behind me, and show you how this is going to work. The zippers on those are on the back of the suit, but on this one, I'm doing it on the front, which I haven't really done in a while. Okay, so I've marked additional lines here on where I need to fold for the zipper. Jumpsuit. Okay, so what I'm talking about the edges is you can see here there's a nice clean top stitched edge on each side of the zipper. And on the inside, you can see where the fabric was folded over beforehand. Now, the only weird thing I haven't been able to figure out is the bottom of the zipper on these closed end zippers. Uh, what I did here was I used some fabric glue and glued a piece of gross grain ribbon, which looks like webbing, and I glued that over that rough edge. But I can't figure out how to get a nice clean edge there without sewing an additional piece of fabric over it. And what I don't want to happen is for that to start fraying and look really weird. So the little piece of ribbon there, in fact, I've got a little yellow piece here to use on this, you know, it cleans up that edge nicely until I figure out the real way to do it, which may not even work on something this small. That's the other trick is sewing stuff for an actual, you know, you know human sized human seems a little easier in the long run. But this is essentially how the front and back would go together if I didn't have the sleeves on it. This is the underneath suit for the for the turtle aliens, the tortillions. Right. Okay, so I've marked that out, and what I'm going to do is, before I cut anything, I'm going to do the exact same stitch I did before for the back, but I'm going to do it for the front. Here. And I'm only going to go to where the zipper is. I'm really only going to do the crotch part of it from here to here. I'm going to leave this loose to sew the zipper onto, but I have to go across, you know, along the original line, not the, the three millimeters in. So, and I'm just going to use the same thing I did before with the pins, put the pin through one, put it through the other side. And then when you turn it inside out, you don't see any of this edging. So, You'll notice the pattern is on the outside when you're doing it like this. All right, get another pin. And I'll line it up through here on this side. And then check your work. Make sure it's all lined up. Okay, this is, see this pin, this top pin here, it's leaning in a little bit, which tells me that everything is not lined up properly on the other side. This might be pulled down, or it might just be a matter of, oh, you know what? I shifted a little bit when I did the front markings, if you remember. That's the problem. Okay. So now I'm just going to sew from here here and leave that back pin in and this is actually going to be since it's the bottom of the zipper I want to make sure I do a really good locking stitch here don't want it pulling apart okay and same thing with the the back have to make sure your needle's down, give it a little turn. That way your fabric doesn't shift. It's like having a pin right there. I'm going to remove this pin. And I'm just going to shift, hand sew, hand turn, shift, hand turn. And that gets the stitch along that tight curve. Oops, the pin was... 
off. So now I gotta kind of figure out where that was. The pin wasn't down. And the last few ones are fine. Lock stitch at the end. All right. Snip the excess. Love these little things. Uh, Fiskars is the brand, I think. And that's the brand of the rotary cutter, too. They have an Ulfa one, and I really like my Ulfa plastic cutter for, you know, doing scribe lines. But, but um, the Ulfa one's not really comfortable in the hand. Yeah, at least that's what I was told when I was buying this. This one's actually cheaper. Um, so that's also good. The blades aren't expensive to, you know, replace. Um, I actually have bought these round blades before in the past. I've used them when I've had to scrape um, round edges of plastic and in, inside of like figure creases. Okay, so I got just the bottom part here sewn, as you can hopefully see. Let's get close in there. Okay, so just from there to there along that line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right to where I stitched with my scissors and back to the ironing board. So just above the stitch line, that locking stitch a little bit. So I cut. So what's going to happen is I'm going to fold this over and iron it, and that's going to make that nice edge for the two sides of the zipper. Put my iron back in. Okay, now this is mostly straight, this line here that I've got to iron along. Um, at the bottom, it curves off to the side slightly, and I think I have a template for just that. So we'll line that up so the curve is down right at the bottom, and I'm going to pull the first side over. As long as you pull it tight against the template, you're going to get that, you know, slight little curve there. Okay. So that's ironed. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I've come to really enjoy this whole sewing process. It's kind of a nice change of pace from glue and putty fumes, paint fumes. You don't have to wait for glue to dry. You're just you're just sewing stuff. Some, um, you know, immediate satisfaction without, you know, too many health risks. Yeah, aside from potentially slicing yourself open. So now I've got the two sides of where the zipper is going to go on the front. All right, get my templates out of the way. And I am going to do that same um, snipping thing on this crotch curve that I did before. So I'm going to cut these little lines almost to the stitch line. You don't want to cut to the stitch line, otherwise you're going to jack everything up. And I'm going to pull these apart. This will make it easier when I'm sewing the zipper. It'll make the front a little more flat. Yeah, other health risks, of course, are burning yourself with the iron, which when you're doing fine edge work like this tends to happen. Poking yourself with needles and pins, that's days of fun, having sensitive fingertips. Okay, so this is pretty much flat in the front here, ready to, ready to go. All right. 
right. So first things first, I'm going to take this little piece of ribbon here that I mentioned before, and I am going to use it to protect that open edge. Um, it'll fray if I don't do it. And it, this is just going to make it look a lot nicer. I've already, this is a piece of grass grain ribbon. It's a nylon ribbon. So the edges of it will fray unless you heat seal them. And that's actually pretty easy to do. I'm going to just I already heat seal the edge here, but it didn't, it doesn't look right. Take a lighter and just hold the edge of it kind of close to the flame. You'll see, you'll notice it melting a little bit, just close enough that it's to get a little bit of a lip. Okay, so that's what the flame looks like on video. And now the edge is sealed. It's not going to fray. You're good to go. Uh, grass grain ribbon is fantastic to use for webbing, straps, uh, stuff like that, belts. So what I'll do is I'll end up gluing it on one side, on the back side, flipping it over, adding a little more glue, and then it's just going to cover, cover that gap right there, put a nice solid edge. I was really hoping to have a black zipper for this project, but I'll just use the yellow one. It matches. It's the exact same color, but but I gotta get my fabric glue off the shelf here. I thought the black would look cooler with the black graphics and stripes I plan to add. All right, so this is Fabric Tack. You can get this at Joann's. Um, this is also the same Beacon brand. It's also the same glue that I use when I'm uh, attaching hair, like I did for the assault proxies. Um, it is acetone based, so it is smelly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove any of the excess goop from the tip. And get it down to the bottom because I've been using this for a while. Um, one of my Facebook friends, Anna um, Nazarova, now I. I'm really bad with names. She recommended this for the hair. And I found that it's probably my favorite fabric glue as well. So I'm going to slide this under there, carefully center it, and just give it a little pressure because I don't want the glue to come all the way through. I forgot to unplug the iron. OK. So let that dry for a second. And then what I'll do is I'll add more glue and I'll flip it over. Okay. Doop -de -doop -de -doop. Um, this next amount of glue I'm actually going to add using a toothpick. Because I don't want to risk getting glue into everything else. And this glue is thick. If you've ever used um, E6000, kind of reminds me of that as far as consistency. So I'm going to spread this glue here carefully. It's very rubbery. And where did I put my tweezers? That's what I'm using the tweezers for. I'm going to pull it over the edge, make sure it's lined up right along the seam. Close this up because this stuff dries very quick. And now I've got a nice glued um, crisp edge there using a you know, similar enough gold ribbon um, webbing. Okay, so next up I'm going to add the zipper. I need the zipper to go, um, so I need to figure out, nice part about this fabric being thin is you can kind of see your pencil lines. So, oh, you know what? No, I did. Okay. Um, so it needs to go to right here on this one. I'm just putting a light little pencil line and right here. I can see the, the lines from my pattern through the fabric. So I've got two little lines here that mark the, where the top of the zipper should go. Uh, the zipper is a little longer, I think, than I need, possibly. Yeah. So I'm going to line this up, and I actually need 
the presser foot, the uh, zipper foot. I have to change out the foot on the sewing machine. Uh, most sewing machines will come with a little tray of um, extra bits, extra needles, things that you need to. Why is this being difficult? Things you need, like you know, the the zipper foot, etc. Um, mine also has a buttonhole sewing thing, which I've never been able to get that to work as well. So I'm going to remove the normal presser foot, and I'm going to pop in the zipper foot. Now the zipper foot, what's neat about this is it's got two sides. Um, the foot is narrower than the regular presser foot here. Um, so you notice this is the connection right here. This has two connections, one on each side. And what this does is it ends up putting the foot, depending on how you attach it, on one side or of the zipper or the other. So it's not so it's not pressed on the zipper. It just makes it a lot easier to sew zippers in. So I am going to probably put that on the wrong side, as I do every time. That's all right. And I'm going to line up the first side of the... Of course I did. Okay, there we go. Now it's on the right side. Okay, so you want the foot to be not on the zipper side. You want the, the foot to be on the opposite side, on the side where you're going to be putting your top stitching to sew the zipper in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line, a top stitch, along this side of the zipper. I'll be done with that. And then I'll do it on the other side of the zipper. And oh yeah, one other little trick I'll show you guys is there's going to be excess thread. Um, you want excess thread, actually. I'm going to make sure I pull some excess thread out of here. And so you snip the ends of the thread usually, and I usually snip them pretty close. But that's only if the thread's going to be hidden on the inside. Since this is an outside end, I leave some sticking out, I thread it through a needle, poke it through, tie it off on the other side, and you never see it again. It's a nice clean edge. All right, so I'm going to get this real close here. And I'm going to put in a lot, just a simple locking stitch. I don't need to go crazy on that one. And I'm going to, with one hand, keep the zipper in place the other hand keep the fabric right along the edge of the zipper and i'm going to i'm going to stitch about a sixteenth of an inch away from the zipper now otherwise i could if i hadn't put that little zipper gap in here if i left it along the edge i could have this strip of fabric go to the center of the zipper or even over and put a little hidden flap so you never see the zipper at all but I kind of like the way the zipper looks, to be honest. So, I mean, it's a science fiction figure. It should have, you know, extra little weird details like, like that. It's just fun. Happy little details. I'm trying to keep my thread out of the way here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to sew. And so and so and so and so and so and so and so. Now you get to a point where the zipper is going to be in the way. So what I do is needles down in here. That's all locked in place because of the needle. I'm going to lift the presser foot up. I'm going to hold both ends of the zipper. And I'm going to use that same dental hook thing so I can reach underneath there. And I'm going to unzip this. Put the presser foot back down, and I'll finish to the end. Simple lock stitch at the end of the zipper. And that's it for one side of the zipper. I'm going to make sure I pull enough thread out, get the machine out of the way. So the ends of the thread here that I would normally snip, that would leave kind of an unsightly little piece of thread sticking out of the end here. So I'm going to thread the one on the front through a needle. And 
and I'm going to pull it right back through the bottom of the locking stitch here and now it's disappeared oh come on there we go see now it's gone they're both on the back um i like to tie them when they're on the back too i, I probably don't even need to but just in case it ever works its way back out i just give it a little little single knot there snip it on the back and we're done do the same thing on the bottom and then I'll move on to the other side. So this is why I made sure I had enough. Oh man. Okay, thread the needle. That's why I made sure I had enough excess thread at the end. Otherwise I have to poke the needle through halfway, then try to thread it, which is a little more difficult. Tie this off. Cut. Put my needle back in the petri dish so i don't lose it and zip it up and now i'm ready to so the other side of the zipper so the first thing i gotta do put the presser foot on the other side shift it over because i'm doing the other side now and same dealio just make sure i have enough excess thread here line everything up and then stitch as close to the zipper edge as possible okay lock stitch in place and now i just hold the fabric close to the edge about a sixteenth of a way, and sew up the other side of the zipper. Getting close to the zipper pull again, so needle down to lock the, the piece in. On this side, I don't need to use the little pick because there's nothing in the way. This little arm thing here tends to be in the way otherwise. Line that all back up and finish stitching to the top. Lock stitch. All right. And now I can use my needle and sew this up again. I used to be really intimidated doing these zippers and um they've always kind of been easy so i don't know what my problem was things you've you know new things tend to be that way though and once you practice something enough or do enough of it and you kind of figure it out and that that includes like i always say making mistakes if you never mess stuff up you never learn how to fix your mistakes and sometimes i learn a lot more from my mistakes than i do my successes Some little threads here that got caught in here in the stitching i don't want to get stuck in the zipper later on snip those away put my needle back in there okay so now i got a zipper on the front of the suit and that zipper if i don't have a zipper or velcro i mean i could have done velcro i guess if i don't have that then i can't get the figure into the suit okay so now i've got the front piece I've got the back piece and I've got the two sleeves and the only thing I'm missing is a collar piece actually I'll need to do a collar piece later um, I hate doing collars collars are um, just really really tricky here's one that I did one of the turtle suits this one oh, this one's cool this is one I did in that same 
gold material, but I doubled it. So you can see that it's, you know, you can't see through it because I doubled the material, um, applied the iron on graphics, have these cool mesh um, pockets that I did with some of the gross grain ribbon to hide the, the rough edge glued on there. So it's a pocket there. That's a pocket there. So they can put equipment in their upper sleeve pockets, kind of like the Star Wars flight suits for the Rebels. Um, graphics ironed on down the sides. But the collar around the top. The collar has to kind of, it's just, they're, they're tricky to sew. I don't know. I actually did a decent job with these. So I'm feeling a little more comfortable about it today. But this is also a longer, taller turtleneck style collar than I plan to put on this suit. I will sew and figure out, I didn't even make a pattern for the collar yet. It's basically just going to be a folded over piece of fabric with a top stitch along the top. Um, maybe I'll fold that and do a second top stitch so it has a nice double lip edge like this. Well, anyway, we'll see. We'll get to we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, what next? Next, I'm going to sew the sleeves on. Now, what I really like about the raglan sleeves is I do not have to hand sew them. Uh, when I do my normal sleeves, I find it a lot easier to hand sew the things because it's sleeves. Um, that style of sleeve is actually two curves going in opposite directions, and that's a, and that's kind of cut off the excess of the zipper. That's actually kind of how the uh, collar is too. It's different curves going in different directions, and that's what makes it really tricky. Um, it's hard to hand sew, but it's hard to to sew on the machine. Okay, almost dropped my pen on the floor. Okay, so what I want to do now is figure out, this is the front of the suit, and I need to figure out what side I want these stripes to go on. Because I want to kind of radiate that way on the suit, otherwise the stripes are going along the front um, instead of radiating out, just based on the whole way it curves. So if the stripes are on this side, see how it kind of looks like that. If the stripes are on the front side, you get more, more bang for your buck. Okay, so that's the side I need it on. So when I flip this all over, they're all on the opposite sides. I'm going to grab a pin and right at the top here along the sleeve line. Same thing on this side. Oh, I didn't do that. I think that's where it lines up. Yeah, okay. So put the pin through, line it up, do the same thing on the bottom. Now, actually, before I do this, I wanna cut away the excess fabric from the top of the sleeve here. I haven't actually done that yet. My, my sewing machine is pretty nice, but it's nice enough for what I usually do. But it will not sew too many layers of fabric at once. So um, by trimming all this excess, it makes the suit not only fit better, but it makes it allows me to actually be able to sew the thing without the needle getting jammed. All right. So those are done, and now I got to figure out this was the right side, correct? Yes. All right, put the needle through the top thing here, have it come through. And guide it up here. This is where I usually end up sticking myself. And then the opposite side. And line it up. All right, so pull the needles all the way through, hold them straight up, and 
Let's see if it's lined up. It seems like it's lined up pretty well. So now I'm just going to. I have a little bit of excess here from the zipper thing. Now I'm going to sew along this line here and sew the one top of the sleeve on. Slide that first needle out. Oh crap, forgot to change my presser foot back. Oops. Oh, lined it up perfectly. Excellent. Okay. Now I got a line and start sewing right at the top of the, the sleeve line here. So I give it a locking stitch. And I'll just slow along this, sew along this gentle curve here. This curve's nice and gentle. So I can twist the fabric. Move this bottom pin so it doesn't get in my way. Finish sewing to the end. And you want to make sure your lines, especially your ends, are very visible on the inside here when you're sewing. Otherwise, you don't know where to start and stop. And that becomes a problem. OK, there we go. Cut away the excess, and I'll show you. OK, so here's the front of the suit and the sleeve and how it would go from the collar. Here's the collar. To the sleeve here and it'll all start to make more sense so then also the other sleeve to the other side of the front and um same deal just mark everything everything's marked with pencil not very strongly actually i can't tell on the black thread here where everything starts and stops so that just a little darker on the edges there now I know where I'm going it wasn't showing up well over the black which was the trick got some excess material here from the zipper fold in my way fold in my way on that side too so I'll just snip that out of the way Okay, lined up. Get another pin. And do the same thing on the other side. All right, the more stuff you have sewn together, harder it is to keep stuff lined up because everything wants to flop away in its own direction. Okay. So the reason these are gentle curves is those make the, you know, the little gap for the sleeve when it's done uh, for the arm to hold, you know, for the arm to go through. Uh, you don't want that to be just flat. I'll answer any questions. I don't know if anybody's asking questions, but if anybody has any, I'll answer them um, in the comments to the best of my, you know, ability. Please read, though. That's a, kind of a pet peeve of mine. People asking the same question over and over and over because they didn't ask, they didn't bother to read that I'd already answered the question five other times in the comments so it's just you know be nice okay so 
Now the front has both sleeves, both sleeves sewn on. And now I'm going to move on to the back. And then, yeah, okay. All right, just trying to figure something out here. Um, sometimes I like to, so you see there's the excess fabric here on the back side. Depending on what side I flip that to, it puts a, a lip on the opposite side. So do I want this to, the that to be popped up? Or do I want the front of the suit to be popped up? So I think I'm going to have to switch back to black thread. And what I like to do, though, is do this on both sides at once. So I have to sew the back on first. However, it's going to be a little trickier this time because this is all sewn together. Um, I probably should have sewn this back piece together, you know, the two sides of this together last. In hindsight, that would have made my life a lot easier. But such is life. I'll remember that mistake for next time. All right, so on the front here, I'm going to put the pin through the top of the sleeve, sleeve right where I ended the other stitching, and do the sleeve on the connect the sleeves to the back and you know same deal line it up so a line it's a process And the other thing, the other trick is making sure you don't accidentally sew, like, you know, another part of it. And you need to make sure everything is out of your way. So I don't want to accidentally sew the bottom of the leg to the top of the sleeve, for example. All right. Line this up. And then get it under the presser foot. Hoping it doesn't shift. Okay, so lined up. Ah, uh, I popped the thread out. I gotta re-thread this. That's what I was talking about earlier. When you don't hold the end of the thread, sometimes the machine, the tension pulls it out, and then you have to re-thread on the fly. I'm doing a live demo is not so bad. I feel like I'm just doing my normal stuff, including the talking to myself. So yeah, there's definitely an order though to to how you sew everything. All right, so now got the the front and the back. So here's the back, the sleeve. And eventually, it'll all get folded over and sewn on the inside to form a suit. So now I gotta sew the other sleeve to the other side to the back side. And then I can move on to the next step. You might notice I'm putting the needle through the, um, the back of the stripe side first on all of this. And that's because it's easier for me to see the lines I've drawn 
on the yellow fabric than it is for me to see the line the pattern lines on the striped fabric so just making sure i do it that way okay that one's lined up and now i gotta line up the bottom side and again now that's all becoming one giant wad of sewn together pieces it's a little trickier to keep everything out of your way and keep everything from shifting. It all wants to go in its own direction. Okay, so I got the two pins in. The pins are facing up on the yellow side. It's easier for me to see that line to sew along. Okay. And everything feels more or less lined up. Okay. Slide that needle out. Oh, I want a needle. Ow. Okay. All right. Lock stitch at the top. Make sure everything's still lined up. And then sew along the sleeve line to get the other side of the sleeve sewn to the back. My needles away. Last stitch at the end. Okay. So now what I've got is this big, massive wad of stuff here. But if I turn it the other way, you'll see, kind of turn it inside out, right side out, really, that it's actually turning in, turning into a suit. So I've got the um, shoulders. You can see why I put the stripes, made sure I put them where they were. They look better on the front than they do on the back, I think. I like it that way. Cat's still banging at my door. She thinks I'm talking to her. Okay, so then the zipper works. That'll be on the front. And the next thing I've got to do is... Let's see. I could either sew along the sides here on the inside and you start for the edge of the sleeve you go to the armpit and then you go down the side here or i could do the inside crotch piece first and save that for last i usually save that part for last though just um it's one of the harder parts to line up so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to flip this back the other way i'm going to sew the two sides together and then when those sides are together I could actually do the hem at the bottom of the legs because then it'll all line up I won't have the hem looking like like that when it's all done if I tried to fold this over now but before that I'm wondering if I should do what I was talking about before with the top stitching on the sleeves whether or not to have this puffed in or out but you know feeling it on the inside it's all kind of locked together oh no actually it's not that's i just the zipper got caught in it okay um yeah you know i kind of think i want the the stripe part to look like it's puffed up a little bit and i'll do that by folding that in the opposite direction that I want the lip. So I'd start with one side and then the other, and I need to actually trim some of this excess on the inside before I ultimately get started with that. Otherwise it's gonna be a total pain. And I'm gonna cut right here is where the stitch ends for the sleeve i'm going to cut a line right here so that the sleeve ends up being 
separate. Almost, I'm only cutting almost to the, almost to the stitch, not quite. Um, and I'll do that on all the corners. Um, the, otherwise, things don't move. They all get, they, it gets bunched up. It doesn't sew. This actually, this trimming, this excess away that I'm doing is usually when I mess stuff up, <laughs> end up accidentally cutting um, things I can't see through the other side, which is not good. I had to redo a few of the turtle suits. Um, actually waiting on primer to cure. Next thing I'm going to do um, is paint the turtle heads. This is, don't worry that I'm neglecting those because I know I do tend to let projects kind of die off and be forgotten from times I get, I get bored. I constantly want to try and build new things and have new ideas. And, and to be perfectly honest, this, this is for my next project. <laughs> um, this is actually this suit design I'm doing here is for a completely unrelated thing to the turtles. Uh, I'm just kind of planning ahead with my pattern now um you know, whatever project i'm working on now rest assured that it's the furthest thing from my mind i'm always thinking of the next project and then when i'm working on that next project i'm thinking of the project or the two projects after that and that's why i end up um abandoning projects i mean i tell myself i'm just putting them away for a little bit but and, you know, sometimes that's the case, but other times I never get back to them. I've got boxes of that stuff. I should just sell it, you know. <laughs> like, here, here's a half-started project that was pretty cool, and I got bored with it. I got that bat wing thing I was working on, that 120th scale thing with the steampunk bat wings and the motor, so the wings would flap on their own. And I see that every now and then, and I'm like, that's so cool. I need to get back to that, and, and I don't. Okay, so I just switched out the thread for black thread so I could do a top stitch on the um, on the striped shoulders. I like the black top stitch on that. I could use yellow. I mean, really, it doesn't matter. I matched up this uh, fabric pretty good as far as dyeing it goes. Um, the colors go pretty well together. I mean, it's a little, it's a little different, but once you put it all together, you don't really notice it. Like I was a little concerned about that. All right, so I'm slowly going to. I see there's a lot of fabric there, so my needle was getting stuck. So I'm going to go up one side to the corner here. And then I'm going to leave the needle in so I could twist this and put the presser foot back down. And then I'm going to go back down along the other side, making sure that the fabric is pulled in so that the lip is on the correct side and that that sticks up a little bit. Not sure if I'm even describing that well. So you have two pieces of fabric, and it ends up like this, where you have that lip right there. Or if you do it the other way, fold the fabric down the other way, you end up with the lip on this side. I don't know if that's even the best way to describe it. Whatever, I'm pulling this out and and hiding the thread again with my with my sewing needle. So I got these two black threads here sticking out on the front. Now this this stitching I just did here is purely decorative. It doesn't actually affect the whole, you know, 
functionality of the piece in any way. It just looks nice. It's like panel lines. Or like, you know, 10,000 additional panel lines on a Gundam kit. Would they really have that many? Probably. Maybe not. Who knows? They certainly look cool. All right. Okay, so you can see what I did here is top stitching along along that. I have to figure out this camera a little better. I mean, this is my first ever live video, so I'm trying to figure out um, live demo whole big giant thing. I think I've done a few little little tiny live videos before. But I'm just trying to figure out the whole new camera and YouTube and all that other stuff. Oh my god, I've been at this for almost two hours. Huh. I had no idea. But that's what happens when you're in the your workshop, happily working away, losing track of time, ignoring forgetting everything else. I already did my shipping for the day, though. I haven't heard the doorbell ring, so I don't think the post came, but my kids are on it. I hope. They're actually very good helpers when they want to be. But they're also becoming teenagers, so you know how that goes. All right. So I will put these excess threads back through so that they're hidden. And then I'm going to just make a run through over this whole piece. Trim off any excess thread that might get in my way for... As I see a bunch hanging around here. And I don't want any excess thread messing up my next steps. So that piece is too short. piece of thread, so I have to stick the needle in first. Then thread the needle, otherwise I won't be able to pull this excess thread through. And then pull the rest of the way through. Great. All right, and now time to trim all this excess. It's kind of funny, you end up with a whole lot of scrap fabric little bits while you're doing this and I'm kind of like a I guess I am a little bit of a hoarder in some ways but I don't like to throw that kind of stuff away but it's you know it's too small to be useful but I mean I save every little extra bit of plastic pipe and other stuff because plastic and styrene you can make use of those little bits fabric like this not so much. I don't know. Maybe I'll use it for kindling or something. In the fire pit. All right. So I've got some fuzz on here. It's not dirt. It's just little bits of fuzz from the black stripe fabric. Okay. So suits top stitched along the shoulder pad looking areas. And now... I'm going to put it back inside out, and I'm going to sew the sides. So if you remember before, I put the lines along the inside of the addition of these um, stretchy cuffs. And that actually helps me line up the cuff to 
for the rest of it. But here's the trick, though. These cuffs are stretchy. And when you have coats and stuff like this, they're usually pretty, you know, those kind of cuffs. Um, I'm thinking of, like, one of those Letterman-type jackets or a band jacket. Like, one of those high school-type jackets have this kind of sleeve. I'm only thinking about this because my daughter's boyfriend was wearing one the other day and was talking about it. Um, I'm actually going to sew in a little bit and then kind of go outward as I hit the regular sleeve. And what that's going to do is make this stretchy part tighter on the wrist. And But before I do any of that, I've got to switch my thread back to the gold color. So pop out the bobbin. Oh, here's a little tip. I have my pegboard behind me, and I have these hooks. And what I do is the the one the bobbins and threads I use the most often, I can store them both on the same hook. So, yeah, quick little tidbit there. So I've got, I don't know, probably 20 different threads up there. Yeah, it makes it easier. Like, I used to have my bobbins all in this little can here. And there's still some in there, but they end up getting tossed around, and they unwind, and I'm pretty sure if I open that tin, it's going to be a big tangled mess. Not just because I just shook it up. But like keeping them on the pegboard hooks keeps them nicely organized. All right, where's the, let's use the tweezers. All right, so bobbins rethreaded. And I'm ready to go on the next part here. All right, so this is the part where I usually use the clamps um, because things want to start shifting. I need to find the end of the ends of the sleeves, so I'm going to put a needle through the one corner of the sleeve and back through the other corner. Hopefully that's aligned properly. It seems like it is. All right, now this is all going to shift around and off of the needle. It's just nature of the beast, so to speak. So what I'm going to end up doing is using a clamp now that it's all lined up. And I'm just going to pop that clamp there, and that clamp's going to act as a temporary needle safety pin kind of thing. Uh, but before I do all of that, I just realized I need to trim away the excess fabric from inside the sleeves. That's going to get in my way. And if I don't do that, it's going to make the armpit area kind of bunched up. And these are the things you learn as you go from experience. And who knows? It doesn't look like I've had many viewers on this live. That's all right, because this thing will be up and people can watch it if and when they want to. When I'm done. My feelings aren't hurt. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, I don't care. I would be doing this whether people were watching or not. In fact, I actually kind of delayed this a few days to, to do the video. I really wanted to. Um, I could have had this banged out. Um, usually I don't do this all at once like I'm doing. I'll... I kind of graze on it. I'll work on it a little bit, go make some tea, go get some, you know, do some work-related email kind of stuff, come back. Okay, so ready to sew. I've got these two things clamped here, so they're going to line up properly. Um, oh, you know what? Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to sew the sleeve for now. Uh, normally, if it was a jacket or a shirt, 
I would go all the way down to the bottom of the leg, all in one go. But because it's uh, I missed there, because it's um, this fabric's really thick. It's not going through. Um, because I need to line all of this up because it's a lot longer and it'll shift easier. Then I'm going to have to do them separately. So I'll stop my stitching at the end of the armpit here on the sleeve. Then I'll line everything up with pins and everything and I'll do the bottom part. Pin out and so to the end of the sleeve. Lock stitch that and remove. Okay, so now the sleeve is done and sewn. Trim off the excess stuff here. I've got that's the sleep hole here for the arm. And then all this excess here on this side will be trimmed away later. All right, now I got to line up the whole side of the leg, which is a longer piece and it's easier to shift out of the way if you're not careful. So that's normally I would go all the way down, but I have to do this separately. So I'm going to line this up with uh, several pins in this case. It's already kind of pinned because I sewed at the top. So let's see here how well this is done by doing the top test. So I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to put it right here somewhere along the middle. And I'm going to see if it lines up on the other side, which it doesn't. You can see how it's off. So that means I've got to, uh, where was it off though? I either got to shift it in or out. Okay, I'm gonna shift it out a bit on the top. And test again. This fabric, that's better. This fabric um, being cotton it's going to stick together. You know, it's not going to slide apart from each other. But some fabrics, if you're using like a pleather or something like that, they have a tendency to want to slide away. So you really need to be careful when you're working on them. Like I've used some rubbery, pleathery fabrics before for stretch suits on figures. And um, I end up having to tape them together and using double stick tape on the inside just to make sure that they don't go anywhere. All right, so I'm gonna really make sure I lock stitch the bottom of the leg here good. And then I'm just gonna sew all the way up the side. So this is a relatively simple pattern. Um, if I wanted to, I could do like I did with the sleeves, and I could sew in other blocks of color and have other seams, you know, in the piece for pockets and such. But that's not really necessary for this single jumpsuit and for this whole project in general. But if I was making, like, let's say a, a Derek Stenning astronaut, cosmonaut, suits which i plan to do and i tried once before and it did not go well but that was a couple years ago and i you know i've learned a lot more stuff since then um okay i am actually not going to trim this edge just yet i'm going to wait until i iron and fold the the bottom hem for the leg here okay but yeah so i i did do some tests on you know, doing a Derek Stenning piece. I tried sewing a suit a few years ago. I was going to use um, 
um, kind of like a shinier spacesuit looking material. And but um, sewing the um, little loops onto the sides of the suit, and in, and the whole actual suit design in general, um, it did not. It was just so. The way I did it was so bulky and um, puffy, and it just didn't it didn't work right. It didn't look right. So I kind of put it away and figured I would come back to it and do it again when I have more skill. And which is now actually I could um, use this pattern to make the suit no problem this a, a pattern actually would be perfect for the the bodysuit i would just do a padded um undersuit or i would do this in um two layers and try to quilt it somehow with a very light batting to make it you know puffy and look insulated all right so Going on to the other sleeve now, and I'm going to clamp at the bottom here where the pin keeps coming loose. Perfect. All right, so now I can sew the other sleeve, and then um, okay, the needle is stuck. The pin is stuck. in the fabric and in my finger. All right, where is it? Ah, I see. So I messed that up a little bit. All right, do it again, Cl reclamp it. Pixie, I hear you, but you cannot come in. I don't really let my cat to my office my workshop very often, only if they're under constant supervision. If you have cats, I think you'd understand why. All right, so this is really thick and it's not moving. There we go. Okay, so yeah, like I said, with my machine, if the, um, fabric layers are too thick, it does not want to move. So I'll sew this all the way to the armpit. Remove the extra guide needle. All right, excellent. So that armpit is sewn. Oh, there's the doorbell. I'll let the kids get it. Or Rachel, I think she's still home. Okay, so any packages that anybody ordered from Industria Mechanica in the past 24 hours are now out the door, unless you ordered them after 9 a.m. Eastern time this morning, in which case they will go out Monday morning because I do my shipping once a day. And usually I don't ship on weekends for Industrial Mechanica, but because it's the holidays and I want to make sure that everybody gets their stuff in a timely manner, I ship on Saturdays too. So I also have a sale going on, industrialmechanica.com. Um, it ends... Tomorrow, and tomorrow, end of tomorrow, December 2nd, 2018. Oh, perfect. I lined that up perfectly. So if you are in the market for a fantastic, awesome garage kit, then head on over to Industria Mechanica and buy one. Because, um, you know don't make a lot of money off of those to be honest I wish I did but 
resin's expensive. The 3D prints are expensive. Packaging is not as expensive, but you know, all the little things. People don't understand. All the little things add up and they cost money. And that all has to come together in the retail price. So when people say, oh, you should just recast your own work, it's like, okay, dude, look. How does that differ from what I'm already doing? Um, I can't recast my own work because I still have to pay for everything else. I still have to pay for the masters. I still have to pay for the packaging. I still have to pay for the resin. And why would, why would I produce an inferior copy of my own stuff? I don't want people to look at it and think, oh, is that what an industrial mechanica kit is like? No. I spent years dealing with, um, you know, casting that wasn't 100% perfect and having to apologize to people for that. And, you know, I don't really have to apologize so much anymore, which is very nice. All right, I'll stop ranting about that because I'm on to... Sewing up the cuffs. Okay, so the two sides of the suit are sewn up now. Um, so now I can get working on the um, hem at the bottom. So I'm going to actually have to heat up my iron. And so you can see the, the lines maybe from the bottom of the pattern here. What I'm going to do is put a piece of board here. piece of I'm calling it board, but a piece of this thick paper cardstock and fold that back over so I get a nice straight line and I'm going to steam iron that slide that out and then I end up with the bottom line now why am I using paper why don't I use you know plastic to do those templates or why don't I use metal and uh, plastic, obviously, is going to melt. So that one's easy. I actually never even considered using plastic. And now I have a good, you know. Oh, yeah. That's probably why I shouldn't. But let me show you um, with a metal ruler here. I could use a metal ruler. But one, the metal ruler's thicker. And so it's going to be a little... And it's, you know, metal. So it's, it keeps sliding on me, actually. But, okay. So, anyway... Heat on the metal ruler, the metal's going to get hot, which sucks. And the steam from the steam iron, you're going to get the condensation on the ruler. So you end up with getting, you know, your ruler's all wet, the steam's everywhere, everything gets hot, you burn yourself. Um, it just doesn't work. So the paper, this thick cardstock paper, I don't know, this particular paper, I just had a few pieces of it left over. It's got a slight ribbed texture to it. I don't even know where it came from, but um, gosh, I've steam ironed it so many times over the years doing this stuff, and it doesn't really warp. I'm thinking, you know, I've, I've tried other papers and stuff, and they've, you know, gotten all warped and soggy and, you know. Okay, so before when I started the video, I showed you guys this. I had a bunch of scrap paper. So here's my here's the trick with the scrap paper. I am going to sew through the paper. I'm going to put the paper underneath this cuff, and the reason is this is a this is a thin edge that I'm sewing on, and it's thin material, even if it's thicker material. And I'm going to be starting at the very corner here. Now, what would happen if I didn't put this paper underneath here? Is the needle would push the whole fabric into the little hole here in the you know in the machine and the thread would start getting all tangled up and it would just become a big tangled mess so by using the paper it provides a barrier almost like having another piece of fabric underneath that so it doesn't get you know nothing ends up pulled in and it just makes it easier to work with now here's the other cool part so I go to the edge here, 
done. It's like, well, but then now you have like paper sewn to it. Well, for now, but because it's sewn along the edge here, it actually makes it a perforation. So, you know, those little dots in paper to tear things away. And it just tears away really easily. And if you end up with any little extra bits, that's where the tweezers come in handy. I had one little extra bit, and now the cuff is sewn. On the, the hem is sewn on the one side, and now I will sew the hem on the other side. just tear away at the perforation again, cross the scrap, and trim the excess threads out of my way. You want to trim this excess thread because it'll show up on your figure. It'll hang out of the, um, the arm and leg holes and snip the end of my finger. Not bleeding, so we're good to go. Okay. So, the suit is sewn now on the sleeves and the sides. So now that the cuffs are done at the bottom, and I have that nice edge, I can line up that edge and not have cuffs that are, you know, offset and, and weird looking. All right, I want to say this is going quicker than I figured it would. I didn't think... I would be two hours in and about to do the last few steps. Okay, so the last step, like I said, it's a little tricky, is um, sewing the crotch. What I was, what I did originally was I would start at one leg, work my way all the way around, and and back to the other side. By the time I got to the other side, everything was all messed up. It was all misaligned, um, just didn't work well. So then I realized that I should do the legs separately and um, start at the cuff at the bottom of the leg, work my way up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some yellow thread and I'm going to thread a needle here. Now threading a needle could be a little tricky, I guess. Um, once you've done it a bunch of times, it's pretty easy. All right, not the end of the thread. And I have no problem with threading a needle anymore. It's just, you know. But when I first started, you know, I was like, yeah, for like ever trying to get that to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by connecting the, two, the crotch together. Just a couple stitches. So I'm going to look for where... The pattern, and by crotch I mean this little point here on both sides of the pattern, the front and back, and I'm going to stitch through one side and go to the other side, and that's going to act as like a pin of sorts, and that's going to pin those two sides together. So it's going to be even. The, both legs are going to be evenly sized. And I'll just go back and forth a few times, making sure everything is lined up while I'm stitching this. So people ask if I hand sew. Sometimes, like this, um, you know, for regular sleeves, I hand sew the, um, the shoulder to the sleeve. And I end up hand sewing this. And you know, a few other little elements. But for the most part, if you can use the machine, you're going to do it quicker. You're going to do it more accurately. You're going to do it, um, you know, your stitching is going to look more professional. It's going to look nicer. Um, unless you're, you know, super, super skilled and that's all you've done is hand sew things for years and that's your whole shtick. 
then yeah, I mean, knock yourself out. Go for it. I'm all for doing as much by hand as you possibly can. So I got leftover thread here on that needle. I'm just going to put it off to the side. But yeah, I mean, do stuff by hand. I feel like less and less people are, are making stuff by hand and more people are relying on 3D printing and computers to do everything. And here I am. I've never... I did a little bit of 3D back in 1995 on a program called True Space 3D. Uh, I still have some of my renders from that. And that is about the extent of my 3D ability. All right, so I'm getting close to an edge here. So I want to make sure I put the paper down. And I'm going to start at the bottom of the leg now that the crotch area is sewn together. So that kind of lines everything up. Now all I got to do is sew along this line. And I might have shifted something while I was talking. And then one of the legs will be sewn. And then I'll go and I'll sew the other side. And we will be... Good. This is kind of shifted here. Okay. There we go. So definitely lock stitch at the bottom. Anytime you have like an end or something that's going to be under high stress, you want to make sure you do a good locking stitch. And that'll keep it from coming apart later on. I'm just going to sew along this line here, right up to where I sewed the crotch piece, another little locking stitch, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So, paper's perforated. I'll pull that out. Snip. That's my snippers. Snip the excess. And now I'll start on the other leg. Which should be like this. Okay, excellent. So that's all lined up. And I'm close to actually being able to put this on a figure. But before I do that, I think I will do the iron-ons. And go through that old process. So lock stitch that good. So the other leg. Oh, I've got to do the collar still. Crap. Oh, my favorite part. All right. Other leg is done. So now I've got a fully sewn, but inside out body. Uh, coveralls, jumpsuit, whatever you want to call it, without a collar. So I'm going to trim away this excess fabric now from the edges. You don't want that inside your jumpsuit. It's bulky and, you know, will bunch up inside of the figure. So I just trim it away. Um, now, I'm pretty sure this is going to look exactly how I want it to look. But if you're not sure if you're doing something like this, then, you know, fit it to your finger, a finger, figure before you trim away any excess. And then that way you can kind of get a gauge to see if it's going to fit or not. But I've made this shape bodysuit, anything different, the way I did the sleeves many times. So I'm confident it's going to work out well enough and I don't have to do that. Okay, so inside is trimmed. And then trim the other side to the sleeve. And just make sure you don't, you know, Cut any cut anything or cut through your stitching, you know. Be careful not to cut off, you know, an arm while you're doing this. Not your arm. Well, I guess your arm, but I meant the figure. Okay, so now all the excess is trimmed and it looks, you know, like a proper kind of bodysuit thing going on here. 
All right, so now I'm going to open up this zipper and I'm going to turn the thing right side out because it needs to be right side out to do the collar. So the trick with um, doing small doll size stuff like this, and I know some of you will be like, ah, he's doing dolls, uh, not manly, uh, I don't care. Okay, it's fun, I enjoy it. And honestly, that's all that really matters when you're doing stuff like this. Are you having fun? It goes on your shelf. Okay. I don't even know where I was going with that. Went off on a tangent. Okay. So anyway. Um, oh, yeah. So when you're doing doll stuff, getting some of the stuff right side out can be a little tricky because it's so thin. So what I like to do is I have a pair of needle nose, pl needle -nose pliers, and I'll slide those through, and I'll grab on on the inside to where my stitching is, where my stitch line was. And, and I'll pull that through. And then I take a pen with the cap on, not the cap side, but the other side, and push it through. And then there's one sleeve. And then I'll just repeat that for the other sleeve and then the two legs. We're good. looking cool it's gonna look even better once I put all the graphics on it I'm excited to get to those okay one more leg Okay. Now the suit is right side out. Weird looking yellow uh, bodysuit for now. Let's, um, I think I'm going to try it on the figure before I do anything else. So, huh, where did I put the figure? Fantastic. I lost the figure in my mess of a workshop. That's what I get for cleaning up my workshop yesterday to make this possible. Ah, here we go. Actually, put it away in a drawer. All right, unopened figure body. I bought a bunch of these for um, my turtle, aliens. And put a few aside. Well, just the one extra, actually, aside for you know stuff like this. All right, so they come, usually they come shipped in an envelope, and you have to check to make sure they're all working. So he's got hands and arms, and um, yeah, this is the universal head peg thing I talk about sometimes that I hook heads onto. And then another bag full of other stuff. I'll show you guys. So here's one of the turtle heads I have primed. I primed these yesterday. Um, drilled enough of a hole, you know, gap in the bottom of it, or dremeled that out, and that'll fit right on that for when I do those. I'll glue it to that peg, and since it's on a ball joint, it could swivel and, you know, turn around, and it'll be fine. All right, so... Skewer this guy back up, put him back in the foam. And I'll probably start painting them later. They're probably not live. I don't know what I'm doing yet. So the other bags got of these figures, 
usually have some extra hands. Um, sometimes they have the hand pegs, extra hand pegs. Sometimes they don't. They tend to break, so if you're, you know, rough on them. Um, I'm pulling the hands off because it's easier to get the clothing on without hands and feet. Feet have double ball joint pegs here. There we go. And I will put those on later as well. These are really nice and tight. Wow, good. Sometimes they're not. Okay. And then the feet themselves can, you know, bend if you're doing a kneeling pose kind of thing. So all these hands I'm just going to put off to the side here. It also comes with these things. And what these are, are for, um, you know, bulking up your thighs. You just slide them onto the thighs if you have a dude you want extra muscular I don't know. I think it looks kind of weird, but if that's your thing, then that's your thing, man. Do what you like. All right. So figure body, no head attached. Um, kind of position it here. Uh, it also comes with another head thing. There's two types of heads typically. Um, there's ones that have a neck built in, which is where you use this one. And there's ones that don't have a neck built in and you use the extra neck piece. And there's a ball joint in here. You just pop this out, pop this other piece in and you're good. I don't know what head I'm going to use on this body yet um, for demo purposes. I have a few lying around, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Okay. So... Let's see, I'm going to unzip the suit, and I'm going to make sure the legs are in the holes. Okay. All right, so got a suit going on here. I should trim the inside of the legs. I'm pull, pushing out the excess fabric from in, excess fabric from inside the legs. So the sleeve length is pretty good. I wanted it a little long, just a little long. So actually, the sleeve length is real nice. It's just uh, long enough that it'll get pushed back a little bit and give you some extra, you know, wrinkles. And let's see, the shoulder things are where I thought they would be. So kind of a weird maintenance suit thing is what I'm going for. Black zipper would have looked slick, though. Oh, well. So anyway, notice I don't have the collar sewn on here yet. And I'm also going to remove this part of the zipper. I'll snip that off, and I'm going to replace it with um, a different kind of pull because... That just looks weird at this scale. Okay, now the boots, the sleeve, things a little bit. This is where posing and everything eventually comes in. The boots, the sleeves are actually, the legs are actually pretty long. Once I put the boots on, it's actually going to push that up, and the legs are going to look much better. When it's all together, I'll take some proper shots and post them on Instagram and Facebook. So... Yeah, the shoulders, the striped shoulders actually look... I don't know if I like them or not. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, on to the collar. So I need to sew a collar on this guy, and I need to figure out how I want to do that. So I'm going to unzip and strip. Okay. Trying to be careful because the last thing I want to do is, you know, rip stitches or anything. All right. But anyway, my main goal here was with sewing this suit was to see if this pattern worked. And so far, so good. Um, not sure about the leg length yet. I might have to reduce that for the intended figure. But for this figure, 
I like the lamp a lot. All right, so I tend to throw my scrap fabric off to the side here. And because sometimes I might have enough of it that I could use to make the collar. I'm not sure. This might, I don't know. This might be long enough. That um, it might not. Better safe than sorry. So what I'm going to do is uh, grab my fabric. Cut off a bit and start making a collar. I don't need it to be very tall, not like the turtle ones. I only need it to be about, let's see, what? I don't know, um, three eighths of an inch maybe in total. So I'm going to take a ruler here and I'm going to. A strip here. This. this is the same yellow fabric I used before. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick with yellow. I was wondering if I should do black for a second there. I don't want to do stripe for the for the collar. Okay, okay. I don't need the roller anymore, but I will need to iron now. Okay, so I got this strip here, and um, the problem I usually have with collars is I end up making them too short, or not, you know, like not long enough to go around the neck completely, or the sewing on them gets weird. So heating up my iron right now, and I'm going to um, pre-sew, you know, this collar, the bits of this collar I need to sew before. I attach it to the head. So I said before, I was thinking of a kind of a double stitch. So what I want to do is iron this right down the center. And I'll line that up. All right, iron's heated up. All right, oops. Okay, so that's heated down the middle. So next I'm going to do a quick um, stitch along this, along this edge, just as close to the edge as I can possibly get it. And you'll see why in a sec. I wanna make the collar look like it's a, a double thing here. Okay. Okay, so what I've got here is just a top stitch right along that. And I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to iron along the inside of that stitch on both sides. And then I'm going to do another stitch. So I ironed along the top of that stitch on the one side, and then I'm going to flip it over. And this is this gets a little tricky to line up. Lining this stuff is usually lining this stuff up is usually where I end up getting steam burns. Those are fun. All right. So what I have here now is like a. Kind of doubled. 
But, yeah, now that I look at it, I'm not sure if I dig it or not. So I'm just going to flip it the other way. And iron it back flat the other side. Trial and error. All right, so what I'm going to do now, though, is one side of this I do need to fold and stitch to get the correct um, width of the collar. Like that, so so I want the whole color to be about three eighths of an inch tall. So I'm just going to line it up along the top of this paper, and then pull it in. And I want to what I want to do is get a nice crease going on here, and that crease I'll use as kind of a guide or when I sew the collar to the actual body. All right, I guess that kind of works. This side's off. And what I probably could use for stuff like this if I wanted to is bias tape. Um, so it's pre, you know, edged kind of like this. But uh, no need. Okay, so what I've got here then, once I fix this other side back down. Is the collar. Um how to describe this so this edge here is um on the inside and it's going to be sewn to the front face of the collar here uh this excess flap here on the other side is just going to um kind of go down into the collar a little bit and kind of hide the neck so it's just some excess fabric to It'll be on the inside. Um, I also need to sew up the one edge of this that I kind of forgot about. So I'll just do 90 degrees here. How do I want to do this? Inside out. Yes. Okay. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, some of this is going to be trial and error. I'm not 100% sure what my plan is ultimately for some of this. So just do it as I go. I think a lot of us probably do that. Okay. Edge of the collar is sewn. So the, what I just did was I sewed one side of the collar so that when I turn it back right side out, it's kind of inside out. I end up with, um, I use my tweezers here to kind of try to straighten all this out. Okay, so I end up with a nice, kind of nice -ish, nice ish edge on the one side of the, you know, a finished edge. That does not look right. Oh, it's a good thing I did the collar too long. How do I want to do this? Okay, top stitch it is, perfect. Okay, figured it out. All right, paper. So anyway, I want a finished edge on both sides of the collar. The one side of the collar I'm going to leave as a flap, and I'll use some Velcro to attach it across the neck. All right. 
guess it's time for another trick too. Okay, let's see. I need my needle again. Oops. Oh, right, I had it pre-threaded already. Save that thread for later. Okay, so I need to pull the um, end of this back through. So the end of the, you know, the excess thread back through so it doesn't show up. Snip the end of the thread so it goes through the needle eye easier. So because this is a collar and you'd end up seeing the excess thread on the opposite side, if it hangs up, I'm going to do another little trick here with the lighter. Um, most thread is polyester or nylon or synthetic, not cotton, so it melts. So what I'm going to do, take a little bit of flame, hold it just close enough that the ends of the threads are going to melt and they're going to kind of shrink back and mushroom a little bit on the ends. That actually kind of locks them in as well. Not as good as, you know, your standard locking them in, but it works. And then they're hidden. Okay, pin back in there so I don't lose it. Later away. Lose it. Okay. And now I'm ready to start sewing on this collar. Okay, so the collar is ready to be sewn on. I just need to figure out where to stitch it on here. So for that, I'm going to need my pencil. And what's nice about this yellow fabric being thin is I can still see my initial pencil lines kind of behind. So I'm just going to lightly pencil in on top of the fabric here the lines that I'll be sewing along based on the color from the pattern. And then along the back is mostly just a very light curve. Okay. Oh, I hate this part. Wait, what the hell did I do? Oh, okay. Yeah. Still messing stuff. Okay, I just gonna need to re-iron this. I'm trying to get this proper. See, collars are I don't know. They're not they're not easy. If I could, I'd put a big honking scarf around every um figure's neck and be done with it. But you know, that's um that's not actually learning anything new, that's just hiding and running away from stuff I don't know. And you don't grow if you do that sort of stuff. So it's always good to challenge yourself if you can. Okay. So I just ironed the inside um, collar guide the wrong direction. I just need to flip it over. And there we go. So I don't know if you can see this, but I'll be sewing along this inside edge here. But I won't be sewing all the way through the front of the collar. I'm just going to be sewing this inside edge right along here. And I had that folded the wrong way, which would have made folding, which would have made doing it somewhat difficult. Okay, so um, bear with me if I curse and swear and threaten and beg and plead and find religion. And, oh, wait. What am I... Aye, aye, aye. Okay. I'm bas yeah. All right. So basically, I'm going to be sewing both edges of this, um, not just that excess lip I left off there. So I need to iron a little more. That's all right. Just 
Um, happy little trees, happy little trees. And see, this is the stuff you don't see on my Instagram post. This is all the crap that goes wrong. <laughs> this is all this crap you don't see on anybody's Instagram post. Everybody shows their their best um, stuff. And I, I don't blame them. I mean, you want to put your best foot forward, but... You know, you don't give anybody the opportunity to learn from mistakes when you do that either. Okay, so what I'm doing here is now that I have this you know, L-shaped properly, the edge of the L is going to line up along that line I just drew. And that collar, I'm going to carefully sew it and position this all the way around the other side. On the other side, I'll have a, this excess flap hanging there. I want a flap, though, so I'll just have to figure out how to seal off that flap, um, you know, when I get to it. But for now, let's sew on... A collar, hopefully. Okay, you know what? I'm going to draw a pencil line along the inside of this crease I made, which is going to help me see it better. Okay. I think I'm old enough to be that stage where I start prefacing things with, as my kids would say, hashtag no filter. Okay, so the trick is I need to keep moving both of these things around um, so that the collar sits straight up and down. Um, if I just sewed it along that line, I would end up with a flat collar. But I want the collar to, I need the collar to stick up where it's like this. So that involves sewing at a kind of a different angle. The same issue with um, sewing on sleeves with my other pattern, which is why I had to do those by hand. It's easier. I attempted doing this by hand first. Did not go well with the turtles. Oh, come on, man. Okay, I need to start over a little bit here. So what's happening is, is what I didn't do with this with the turtles was uh, sew a collar with a zipper. And so what's happening here is the zipper is catching on the um, mechanism that pushes the fabric forward on the sewing machine. So the fabric itself is not moving and everything's staying in one place so that is of course where the paper trick comes in handy it'll just give that something to hold on to temporarily all right so i gotta reline that up put the paper under there i don't want the paper going too far under. I just don't want to deal with it as I'm doing everything else. Line that all back up. And of course, I pull the thread out of the needle and have to re-needle it. And that's how it goes. Okay, so I got to re-thread the needle real quick here. Well, of course I do. Okay, 
should be good to go now. Let's finish doing this collar on. All right, so I'm just gonna go a few, ow, a few stitches. There's a little bar here, nice little bar. You don't want to get your fingers under it, otherwise you get they get smashed. So you, I go a few stitches, leave the needle in, adjust to make sure that the crease is lined up with my pencil line. A few more stitches forward. Make sure the needle's in, readjust, and I will be continuing this around the whole collar. The back is actually a little easier since it's mostly straight, but the two um, front edges are not. And then I did it with pencil line um, lightly, which I can erase later on as needed. Always make sure to put your presser foot back down before you start sewing. Otherwise you end up making a mess. Okay. So I like to go two or three and then adjust. And that keeps it on track for the most part. On the back, so I can go a couple extra stitches. Okay. And now this is where it starts getting weird because everything's all gets all bunched up because of the sleeve and the whole angle of everything. sure I stitch along the top of the sleeve corners here otherwise that'll be a big hole by the neck oh, I definitely hit the sleeve Now back to the more difficult curve around the front. Everything's kind of bunched up, and I don't want to so in wrinkles and like creases into all of this so that's why i keep pausing it's this last little part here that's the hardest Getting close to the end of the zipper here. I don't want to jam my needle into the, the zipper stop and break the needle. Okay, so that should be on. 
hopefully good. Check my work here. Oh, I hope this worked out. Okay. So flip this back up and around and yeah, I got a got a collar going on here around the, the top. And like I said, I was gonna have some excess. Um so I want it to be to about here so that it flaps over the other side with a little bit of Velcro. So right here is where I would want it folded in, which means I need about that much excess. Now I need to figure out how to finish off this edge here. Hmm. Okay, back to the ironing board. So I think what I want to do is kind of flip it to a top stitch and kind of flip it inside out a little bit. And I think it might be easier if I pre-crease it on the, with the iron a little bit. Oh, wow. Closing on three hours. All right. Well, I'm almost done with the sewing part of it. I'll do the iron on so next and um, I'll do weathering in a different video, I think. Because I can't spend the whole day doing this. As much as I'd love to. Seriously, not even a joke. I'd much rather be doing this than, you know, some of the other stuff. This is fun. Okay, yeah, that's definitely easier to, set, to do that first. And then end up with this little end of the collar here. And I will um, actually, this is tricky here. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, collars are the worst part. So if you're buying action figures, you should appreciate the collars. Somebody probably spent an inordinate amount of time trying to work on them. Especially if they're one-off custom figures like this. I'm sure if you do, you know, a hundred of them a day, it's a lot easier. Okay. So now I will top stitch all this together so that I have a nice, neat collar. One more quick little iron here. Just, ow, 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 ow. Steam burn. Okay, to hold it all together. And we're we should be good. All right, again, using the paper to kind of keep it all together. And it is jamming. There we go. Now let's see what up. Okay, perfect. Now you'll note I'm just using the wheel here to um, the wheel on the side of the thing, this of a wheel to stitch this because it's you know it does it one stitch at a time and I have greater control over you know getting near edges. So 
So I'll just clean up the rest of this collar and put a whole thing on the figure and see how it goes. I have to do the lighter trick again here. Also trim away some of the excess from around the inside of the neck hole. Make sure you don't send your fabric. Okay, done, 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 done. Okay, so now I got a bunch of extra, you know, crap here that's that needs to go away. So I'll just trim that excess. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So I got a a suit now with the collar attached. So and it looks like the collar worked though. Let's zip it up and see. Yeah, sticking up. It's um, you know, it, the Velcro will. It might be stitched a little low there, but that's all right. Yeah, Velcro will help hold it one side to the other, and we're good. Okay, let's do the iron-ons real quick. I don't need a sewing machine anymore. I am done sewing. So let me get all this extra junk out of my way. What I'm doing now is just putting my tools away real quick. My excess stuff that I don't need right now because gets in the way and then I end up losing stuff or breaking stuff. Okay, so for the iron-ons, we have a suit back here. I pre-cut this on the Cricut yesterday. And so it's still attached to the Cricut mat. The mat is sticky. And that's what holds on the different materials. So I'm going to take off the um, stuff from the mat, and I'm going to put the clear protective thing back on the mat so it doesn't get cat hair and thugs and, you know, all kinds of other junk all over it. All right, so what I have here is the, you can see it's scored with the um, iron-on material. It's just black, and on this side, is the clear backing material and the score side i had this have it set the cut and mirror so it cuts it reverse on this side because that this is the side that touches the fabric so that when it goes down it looks good so what i need is to first what they call weeding and i need to pull up the excess iron-on material from the backing and so Let's see here, it just kind of peels away. The backing is sticky, the clear backing. So all your design stays put, usually. Like I um, want to be careful when you're peeling the backing away. You'll notice it's tearing a little bit and that's actually not necessarily a bad thing. It gives me a better chance to get in there. Okay, so just tearing away and pulling off this excess. I have this weeding tool that came with um, the Cricut stuff. And you use it to just get in the little corners, pull up stuff that's kind of in the middle, like the middle of an O, for example. You would use it to pull that up. And so these are four or five different iron-ons, all in the same color, that I just cut all together. Where's my tweezers? Oh, 
Oh, see, the one thing I didn't put away, because I thought I need them, I should have put away because I couldn't find them. And that's why I put my stuff away. Organization helps. Okay. So just remove the center of that A and the center of this A. Here. Okay, so all this stuff, this is just the leftover garbage, um, the excess iron on stuff. And what you're left with is your the stuff you'll actually be ironing on. So now I'm going to take my cutter here. This is what I usually use for cutting things, for plastic, for paper, just about everything. Um, sometimes I use my X-Acto. Knives, sometimes I don't. And I'm just going to trim off the excess from these. Iron ons. So one down. And then I have this long one here that's going to go down the front. That big K is for the back. And I did a K for the K district shaft. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see the, the ramen shop. And I did that cyberpunk shaft with all the tubes. It looks like it came from um, Blame or Knights of Sidonia. Then I have this these extra um, caution stripes that I did, which I actually was going to put along the uh, bottom of the legs. That has been made a lot more difficult now. I should have did it before I sewed the legs together. So what I might do instead is, um, actually, I'm just going to put them on the um, ends of the sleeves, I think. That'll look cool. Down the sides of the sleeves, like stripes. Okay, so I got three caution strips here. One long one, one long graphic, and one graphic for the back. So I'm going to put these out of my way. And I'm going to get the ironing board out and attach these graphics. And then that's it. I'll just put it on the figure. I'll put a head and boots and hands on the figure. And I'll show you guys what it looks like all done. Okay, let's adjust. Okay, I'm going to have some adjustment problems here because I didn't get my extension cord yet for my USB. Hurry up, Amazon. Okay. So let's do the one on the front first. So I'm going to flatten this out as much as I can. The iron, I want to make sure that I have steam turned off on the iron. You don't want steam when you're doing the um, iron on. So, you know, turn that off and make sure your iron is on. They say the highest setting. I try to avoid that. I, I, use, um, I use the lightest cotton setting myself. All right, so next you want to line up your graphic, your iron-on, where you want it. And this one's going to go down the side of the front here. And um, yeah, as soon as this guy's done, he can enjoy a delicious bowl of fake ramen. Holy shit, I haven't even eaten lunch. I've been, I barely ate breakfast this morning. I'm going to enjoy a delicious bowl of ramen. I've got some... Um, Nissen Rao, Rao, whatever, tonkatsu flavor, my favorite. All right, so iron that on a little bit on the front, and then carefully peel away the backing. All right, and then what I like to do is um, I'll put a piece of paper over it, give it another iron. The paper is thinner than the backing. And you're also supposed to go from behind. That's a little trickier because I'm going to put a big graphic on the back here. So I won't be actually be able to do that very well. Um, this corner of the K isn't down as well as I'd like because it's so close to the edge of the sleeve here. So I just gave it another little... Let me try moving the zipper out of the way. Maybe that will help. I just want to make sure I get in there 
make sure that that is attached. I don't want that peeling up. These stick pretty good, though. They usually don't peel up. So there. Now I have um, some technician graphic down the front. Let's do the big K on the back. And that's the reason I was cleaning up is I keep picking little bits of thread that are getting stuck in these. I need to zip up the front, make this easier. Okay. So I'll put this big K graphic on the back. Make sure that the back is as um, flat as possible. I'm using the seam line from sewing to line up the K. So I'm lining it up along this side of the K about 3 sixteenths away from that. And I'll start pushing this down. Once you start getting some of the iron on down, the rest, you know, doesn't shift around so much at all, really. So it makes it easier to get them down. And I'm using the tip of my iron a lot to get into the corners. I want to make sure this is down really well. And then carefully, slowly, just in case it's not down properly yet, peel up the... Ah, uh, see? It wasn't. So I peeled up the end and the edge of that. So I just got to line it back up here and iron it down. Now it's good. All right. Now uh, let's see, find a bigger piece of scrap paper here. I didn't use yet. Now I'm going to give this some more heat here. And just make sure that iron on is as on as it's going to ever be. And it is, and you can even see some of the, um, the stitching through the iron. That's really down there. It's almost like it's painted on, which is pretty cool. Okay, nice. That's not going anywhere. Nope. Okay, so a nice graphic on the front, graphic on the back. Let's put those um, things down the center of the sleeves. So I'll use the seam on the one side to line up for this side. And I did these, yeah, I did opposite mirrored ones. So I don't actually care on these ones, which side is which, unlike the shoulders. So I'll line that up, get that out of my way. And you're just pressing with the iron, you know, there's an adhesive or something and it ends up melting into the fabric to attach the iron on. Probably got my head in the way of that shot. All right, so one of those on one sleeve. Let's get rid of this back and throw in the trash. Okay, do that real quick. Yeah, the difficult part with the iron-ons is um, it's probably more difficult to design them than it is to apply them. All right. Then I'll put the other stripe on the other side. And then this guy will be ready for some hazardous work inside of um, Shaft K. after enjoying some Roman or going to um, Wilfred and Gilbert's bakery. Or the bar I haven't, you know, done the facade for yet. Oh, that'll be fun. I'll be able to do um, live videos of some of my one six scale building facades. All right, so problem here, of course, is I put seams in the arms, <laughs> creases in the arms. I'm gonna turn the steam back on and um, 
you know, try to stay away from the iron on part, but steam out those creases. I mean, I've steam ironed over the iron-ons before, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Steam, steam, steam. Okay. Well, the suit itself is done, I think. I have one extra caution stripe graphic. I'm just going to hold on to that and put it aside in a folder somewhere and use it later. I don't think I need to put it anywhere else on here. I don't really want to put it on the legs or anything. Um, so I guess now's the time to put the figure together. So I'm going to grab those hands that I pulled off of him before. I'm going to grab the feet. And I'm going to grab a pair of um, boots I had in the drawer. I just kind of have these sitting in there. I think I've used these before for um, that winged figure. Um, so kind of, kind of a matte finish. And then the feet fit right into them. Some boots, you have to just use the foot peg and pop that into it. Other boots, you put the whole foot into it. All right. Oh, wait. Actually, one other thing. I want to attach... Um, I'll attach the Velcro when it's all done. Let me um, actually get the Velcro real quick. It's in this drawer somewhere. We've got um, doll hair, fake feathers. Actually, no, I mean real feathers. Sorry, real feathers. Ah, there we go. Velcro. Is this? That might not be the doll Velcro, but it's black. Um, I've got lots of crepe hair in here for making. Um, it's what I used on that Yeti. Oh. Apparently, I have zippers in here too. Don't know what that. Oh, that's more Velcro, but that's white. I'm pretty sure I had black doll Velcro. That must be it. Okay, the the white is actually more of a clear Velcro, so it's um hidden. Alright. So I just need a little piece of this, and I'm not going to use my good fabric scissors, scissors to cut it. I'll use these old things. And I'm just going to need a little square from each side. Yeah, this stuff's nice and thin. This is the stuff I was looking for. I just thought it was a sheet rather than a strip. Okay. Excellent. So I've got my little piece of Velcro here. Uh, what I'll do is I will use that same fabric glue. And I'll glue one part of it here, one part of it on the inside. And then when I put the wrap the collar on, it fits properly, but I'm going to wait till I get it on the figure itself so that I know exactly where to put it. All right. So get this guy dressed up again. So, yeah, so you don't, when you're putting clothes on the figure, you don't really want to have the um, feet and, you know, hands on it'd be like trying to get yourself dressed while wearing giant boots and boxing gloves you know it's not going to go real well all right zip hat up make 
make sure everything is positioned in here. I might want to put a little more room in here, maybe. We'll see. We'll see for my final one. Um, actually, let's let's get let's snip that off. Some zipper end here. Some metal cutters, wire cutters here. All right, so the little zipper end is off because it looks dumb. Ow. Okay, good. I'll find those bits later. And now I'm going to take some, let's see, where is it? Ah, got some black string up here, some thicker black string. Yeah, this is the stuff. Um, my scissors. Excuse me a second. I'm just okay. So I got some thicker black string here, like you know, a little heavier black cord. It's I think it's like a crochet a thread. I'll pull that through there, and I have I have some beads somewhere that almost look like a pull end. They've got two holes. They're a rectangle. Let me find those real quick. I think they might be in this drawer. I have all kinds of little sewing things I use for figures. This bin is um, like rings. Uh, metal rings, brass, gunmetal, um, all the little bits I would normally use. Buckles, snaps. There's a bunch of snaps here, snaps here. Oh, mm, I got little black snaps here. I wonder if I should use... Not on this one. I'll use the Velcro. Okay, found the beads. I'll throw all this back in here. Those little drawer things from Ikea are awesome. I love them. I put um, little label, um, like card catalog slots on the front of them with you know drawer pulls so that I can see at a glance what's in them. And it reminds me of um, the herb guy from Spirited Away. I love having like a whole bunch of little drawers like that. It's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm putting this um, let's see if this is even how I want it. Just trying to figure out how to position this so that when it does go on Okay. Probably better if I do it this way. Okay, so I'm, you know, putting the cord through this bead. This bead has two holes. And, of course, the thread is fraying at the end, so it's making it difficult. All right. Okay, excellent. Now it's in. Okay, so here's the little bead pull thing. It's a gunmetal color. And what I'll do is I'll thread one side of this through the zipper hole. And then I'll knot it. And then this becomes the new zipper pull. Okay, tweezers. Figure out where I want the knot exactly so it's not too long, not too short. Perfect. Okay, so pull that tight, trim off the excess, 
And then the excess actually gets tucked into the, the hole. The knot here gets tucked back into this hole here. And then you never see that knot. Now you have just a nice or looking, you know, pool cord thing. All right. Hands. Let's put some hands on him. I'm going to put a normal hand on this side. And I'll put the other hand on the other side. These are just the basic unpainted hands that came with the figure. All right. Okay, so we got hands on now. And now for the feet. So make sure I put the right foot on the right side. Pop those on. Okay, there's one. Oh, that's really nice and, and stiff. Good. If you have weak ankle pegs, it's the worst. Your figures end up falling off the shelf and breaking, and yeah, nobody wants that. Okay, good. So now he's got some feet. And now I put his boots on. Okay, good. It's one down. So these boots are a little wider. I probably... Oh, fuck. So, oops, I mean, I put the wrong boot on. <laughs> Um, okay, so anyway, these boots are a little wider, so they, um, and tall, taller than I planned for my actual project, so these pants are going to be really bunched up. I'm trying to get the foot all the way down into this boot. It's not working. So I think I'm going to try this another way. I'm going to... Use my needle nose, and I'm going to put the feet into the boots first to make sure they're pressed all the way to the bottom so I don't jack up, jack up the rest of the figure. There we go. One in. So, yeah, so the pant legs are going to be super bunched up, which is not, I don't know, might look cool. Yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Um, I would actually like them to go over the boot on my next project. So, note to self, make it wider. There. Okay, both of those are in. And now I just got to kind of adjust that peg so I can reach it. Make sure I'm putting the right foot on the right one. All right, let's line up and all right, excellent. So yeah, these um legs are a little. I don't know if I can get these this cloth over these boots or not. I cannot. So I'm gonna try to bunch it up down near the bottom a little more, I guess. I don't really have anything else on hand to use. Otherwise, I would. My boots for my turtles haven't come yet. These ones don't want to stand real well. Okay, I don't like these boots. Okay. Um, time for the head now. Let's see which head I want to use. Let me pop this peg off here. This, this um, joint. So this is like the joint I'm usually talking about, like with, when I sell my ape heads on Industrial Mechanica that you would use to attach. I'll use this, um, this Russian guy came with a D 
damn toys. Head. I use him for a lot of my my stuff. I think what I might do is make another gas mask helmet kind of guy for this. All right. So the excess collar here just needs the little bit of Velcro. And so let's see, grab my Fabri-Tac again. Doopy 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 doop. All right, now I need a tooth. Where did I put that toothpick? I guess I'll get a new one. This glue, sometimes this glue just dries way too fast. All right. Velcro in there. So a little bit of Velcro on the inside. That's the um the rough part. This is um the next one is the softer piece. I'm actually going to put the glue onto the toothpick first for this one. All right, let's let that sit for a second. Don't want this to be as long. Okay, excellent. All right, the softer piece is a little trickier to, to do since it's tiny and, you know, wants to move around. So I'm going to hold it with my tweezers and use my tweezers to apply it as well and i'll put it here on the other end of the of the collar so i got the two pieces of velcro it's an interesting looking suit i wasn't sure how it was going to look yeah all done so, okay let's let these dry a bit um Got some other accessories here I might use with this dude. I made this a while ago. I don't know if you guys remember this. This is that drill from that Kotobukiya set. And it's actually got a little motor. And I also got, this was part of a keychain I ordered on Etsy. It's an actual working monkey wrench. And it's uh, perfect for just a larger, you know, one six scale monkey wrench for a figure. So for a technician, you know, worker kind of guy, figured I might use these two items with him. All right. I'm just going to Velcro this over now, pull that tight. And that's that. The collar looks weird. Um, no, wait, you guys can actually see. Okay, so there's the, there's the dude. Um, let's pose him a little, a little better than what he is here. I don't know, the shoulders are a little weird, I think. But, you know, it works. Kind of neat. I dig it. And, it, you know, it's kind of a proof of concept for my, for my pattern overall. So now I know the um the things that i need to fix and work on such as wider um legs slightly work on that collar i'm not real super happy with how the collar came out so i'll have to figure that out and um you know make sure i have the actual color zippers in stock that i want but otherwise yeah, i kind of dig the graphics and everything so all right, well, that's anyway, that's my um, tutorial on this dude and this um, suit. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll try to do more of this kind of thing in the future. Uh, if you want, you can, um, I guess I should put this up at the end. So click the um, button down over there somewhere to subscribe to 
you know, my channel. Um, there should be a link up in the header thing for Industrial Mechanica and my Fichten Foo websites. So, you know, subscribe. There should, you know, maybe there'll be pictures, maybe there'll be other related videos to check out somewhere on the screen. And um, I think that's it. All right. Thanks, everyone. See ya.